there are plenty of quotes or photos we can feel inspired by every day. Here are examples that I love from Facebook. Getting inspired is important for sure, but it's not enough. It's one half of the equation. We must act on our inspiration to be effective at achieving goals, improving ourselves, and helping others. But not just any action. Rather, actions that actually work to serve our purpose. Put more formally, inspiration is a necessary but insufficient condition for success. Is it a math formula? Is it one of Albert Einstein's theories? Is it an exercise for the core? In a way, it can be all of the above. Simply put, an algorithm is a method for solving a problem or steps for accomplishing a task. Yes, it is often a math formula or codes for computer programming. When you search for information on Apple, for example, sophisticated Google algorithms can determine whether you mean the fruit apple or the company Apple. But in my use of the term, an algorithm is mathematical and non-mathematical, that is, conceptual and practical. Of course, you may call it whatever makes sense to you, for example, rules, steps, or directions. My aim is to draw on a wide range of knowledge, ideas, and experience, from math and physics to sports and fitness, plus much more, to help us deal better with the smaller to larger issues we face, from managing time and conserving resources, to hitting tough targets and realizing a return on investment, to coming to grips with poverty and conflict. I call it the core algorithm, because it is applicable across a wide range of issues. Step 1. Begin with the end in mind. If you haven't read the book The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, now is the time to do so. Stephen Covey wrote it in the late 1980s, and I virtually ate it up reading it back then. I love to read, and I've read a lot in my life, this is one of the few books that has had a lasting impact on me. Begin with the end in mind is one of those seven habits, and it means having a clear sense of purpose from the outset. Before you take action on something, be clear first on what you're trying to accomplish. Be clear as best as you can on what your goal, objective, or purpose may be. Step 2. Walk backwards to map the pathways. Now that you have your end firmly and clearly in mind, map the pathway, backward from there to where you are now. If you aim to lose 25 pounds, for example, the most important thing you have to do is a very simple algorithm. Burn more calories than you consume. That's the most immediate, most direct impact to the goal of losing 25 pounds. Apply this algorithm and you will lose weight. Next is the intermediate impact. And it has to do with techniques or programs that work best for your purpose and for your body and lifestyle. You have two basic choices. Be more active or eat less. Exercise more or eat smaller portions. Probably the best option is some balance of both. We'll talk more about ideas like these in episode 3, but to emphasize for now, whatever you do must serve your purpose and it must work for you. You could be walking the dog regularly and playing with your children more, activities which are usually cost-free, 
It could mean working out more in the gym where you can concentrate and have trainers working with you, which require an investment of time and money. Keep walking backwards until you get to where you are, here and now, so you know how to get to your goal and what you need to do at this moment. Do you need to write some motivational notes to yourself, or perhaps talk with a friend for support and accountability? Why do we have to walk backwards, Dr. Ron, you might ask? I believe we often lose track of how to get where we want to be, and we get caught up in efforts that do not quite work vis-à-vis -vis our end. For example, how many of you have been enticed to sign up for an expensive membership to a cool, spacious gym? Then you realize that your work schedule is so busy, and the gym is a little too far from home so you end up going to the gym infrequently. So mapping the pathway backwards ensure that we know what the most immediate direct steps are to reaching our end. Step 3. Walk those pathways. Again, the algorithm is simple. Do what you need to do. Take action on your working plan. They say if you don't take a step, you just stay where you are and go nowhere. I arranged to meet a friend for coffee at La Vaza Cafe, and it's in the Chicago Loop on 27 West Washington Street. The Chicago street system was designed very well, so it's easy to follow, and I'm very familiar with it. Still, I need to picture in my mind where the cafe is. I know that by virtue of its address, it's just west of State Street, and it's on the south side of Washington Street. This is step one. Begin with the end in mind. For step two, walk backwards to map the pathways happens very quickly. I arrive at the loop by train at the Union Station off Adams Street, so I have to trace back in my mind the route from the cafe to the train station. Step 3. Walk the pathways is an easy, pleasant walk in the loop. I simply need to keep walking eastward and northward until I reach the cafe. I'm not talking just about losing weight or finding our way around places, but also dealing with corporate challenges and resolving poverty, disease, conflict, and environment impact. So what I am to do on the whole may come across as exciting and motivating, or perhaps as ambitious, foolhardy, and crazy. Maybe both. It may seem like an impossibility to tackle such complicated, pervasive problems, but I assure you that it's possible to do, and to do so more effectively than before. What's more, I will show you how it's possible via the core algorithm. I already know I'm one of them. The question is, are you one of the crazy ones too?